so once again, if, if we take those three objects that were took out of the bag, well, the first one is a bobbin. And let's look at this as if it's, say, late key stage one, key stage two. What could this be? Well, you don't need to give as many options. Some children will see it could be wire. It could be barbed wire. It could be, uh, it could be a bomb. It could be something... Well, if you say that, it's, it's barbed wire. It's barbed wire by a battlefield. And there's someone there. Who could it be who would be sitting by the side? Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be just a boy or a man. You could make a point of making a gender-directed story by saying it was a girl. It was there and sad and lonely. Her heart was heavy inside of her chest and felt like a stone. And her blood would only beat slowly. It felt as cold as, as mountain river water. As she sat upon a barrel by the side of all of the barbed wire. The war had been raging and now it was dark and a light snow fell um, by the side of this once beautiful field. The girl was looking for a father, a father who'd gone away to the battle, a father that she knew must be quite close to this place. It's a lot more story when you keep modelling it and giving the children direction than saying once upon a time there was a bobbin. So you're answering these questions, you're starting to use description. Well, and the second one was this. Well, what could this be? Well, could it be the moon? Could it be a reflection? Could it be a lake? This is all about modelling. And take an object with nothing in mind other than to get the children to start describing how it could be used inside of a story. What I'm showing you is the finished article where you've spent several days taking an object out, asking who, what, where, when and why. You've taken an object out and you've described what it could be, what it could feel like, what somebody would feel like having this. So the girl is there. She's sitting on a barrel by the side of the barbed wire. And this could be, well, the cook giving out uh, the, the, the terrible rations to the men. And all of the men, she asks them, have you seen my father? And she starts to describe his father. And this is a chance to bring in character. She starts to describe her father. He has a helmet upon his head. Well, they all laughed at her. Because every single one of those men would have liked to have had a helmet upon their head. Especially in this dangerous place. Nobody asked why she was in that place. Seeking her father. But they could all feel the loss that she had inside of her chest. In the distance, she could see that there was a tall tower and she could hear the sound of helicopters in the air. Without thinking, she ran to that place and there she could see her father with his last, with his last dying breath. He worried. He had always worried, even when there was no war. What are you doing in this place? But his ears could not hear her reply, for his last breath was one that was made with a smile upon his face to see his daughter. There's nobody says that it has to be a happy story, but it's a lot different from the fact that it could have been a tailor or a giant. And you're writing a story, you're making a story, and it's a simple story. As I've said in the booklet, I think a lot of the time we confuse the idea of writing with having to create something that nobody's ever read before. The actual enjoyment of creating a story is all that it's about. If it becomes a fun activity when you are taking objects out of a bag, then it's not such a labour, especially if the children understand that there is a structure. Children don't get stories as part of their everyday life. But if you have this at the back of the room, there where you're working with the children and you can look at it, you can ask these questions. I'm not saying that we are all creative, but we can all ask questions. How does that person feel? What can they smell? What can they see? What are they doing in that place? You just use this as an aid de memoir to try and get the children to give you answers. And you keep going on about description. Some children will use a logical, uh, adjectival description, whereas big, little, little, small. 
and you tell them that it's got to be in a logical order. Quite often, it doesn't always have to be like this, but quite often when you're using adjectives, if you put them in alphabetical order, it sounds better. So if you were to say, like, um, hard and heavy, or heavy hard, or if you were to use um, little and soft, soft little, if you get them to actually talk out loud and see which they prefer, it is giving them a chance to see and join in with the discussion as to how it's, the story is made. And all of these are done as, uh, as a model, as a class, object, uh, class objective to make a story for the whole class to use and then they can start becoming more creative and then they can start thinking of this on their own.